The Conservative Case Against Nikki Haley The GOP primary is now a two-person race between former President Donald Trump and former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley. But if this is a two-person race and Haley believes she has a chance at being president, why is she facing so many calls to drop out of the race? Why are so many bona fide conservatives anti-Haley? Kentucky Senator Rand Paul started the Never Nikki movement just before the Iowa caucuses, and it's picked up steam with grassroots conservatives, legislators, and even political pundits. Here's what Senator Paul had to say about Nikki Haley's candidacy and why he refuses to support her as the Republican nominee. As I told you yesterday, I'm ready to say something about the presidential race. I've had a long relationship with Donald Trump, and there's a lot to like there. I'm also a big fan of a lot of the fiscal conservatism of Ron DeSantis. I think Vivek Ramaswamy has been an important voice. Also have listened to and met with the independent Bobby Kennedy. I'm not yet ready to make a decision, but I am ready to make a decision on someone who I cannot support. So I'm announcing this morning that I'm Never Nikki. And if you go to nevernikki.net, you can let her know that you're not a supporter either. I don't think any informed or knowledgeable libertarian or conservative should support Nikki Haley. I've seen her attitude towards our, invent, our interventions overseas. I've seen her involvement in the military industrial complex, $8 million being paid to become part of the team. Since leaving her post as ambassador to the United Nations under President Trump, Haley has amassed an $8 million fortune, most of which has come from Boeing and other military contractors. There's no way for us to know if she's advocating for war in Ukraine because she would receive a kickback, or because she truly believes in the need to provide military aid. Then again, she wants to launch war after war against Russia, Iran, and China. She's even said as much. But what you do have to do is deter it. There's a reason the Taiwanese want the U.S. and the West to support Ukraine. Because they know if Ukraine wins, China won't invade Taiwan. There's a reason that Ukrainians want the U.S. and the West to support Israel. Because they know if Iran wins, Russia wins. Iran, Russia, and China are connected in an unholy alliance and connected in their hatred for freedom, democracy, and of all things, the United States of America. So we need to look at all three of them together. Don't ever separate the three of them because they are working together. We need to look at them the way they look at us. And when we start to do it from a, a level of prevention of war, of national security and of protection of Americans, that's when America will be strong again. So let's get this straight. The United States needs to go to war with our three biggest adversaries to prevent war? This makes absolutely no sense. Our military recruitment numbers are abysmal. Our national debt is off the charts. We fail to invest in our own military assets, and we're supplying the limited resources we do have to fight foreign wars. The most laughable thing is Nikki Haley wants to con voters into believing she would be a fiscal conservative who would address our national debt. I think it's time we put an accountant in the White House. I For being a so-called accountant, you sure don't understand what the national debt is or that we need to decrease it. I've been a two-term governor uh, that ran as a Tea Party candidate, and I took a double-digit unemployment state and turned it into an economic powerhouse. I dealt with Russia, China, and Iran every day at the United Nations. I know what it means to put them on their heels. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to start a war overseas. The answer is peace through strength, not sending billions in military aid or even boots on the ground to settle conflicts we have no business being involved in. 70% of Americans don't want a Trump-Biden rematch. Look at both of those presidents put us trillions of dollars in debt, and our kids are never going to forgive them for it. And yet she wants to continue the war in Ukraine and even launch new wars with China and Iran. As if our children would ever forgive her for propelling us into new wars and tacking the cost onto our national debt. But Rand Paul said something that resonates even more. It gets to me at a, at a very basic level. It gets to me when I see people who I think care more about the borders of Ukraine than they care about our own southern border. And I see these people every day because they're the entire Democrat caucus up here, but they're half of my caucus. Half of my yes. Republican caucus is, as we speak, ready to sell out, and they're ready to sell out fake border reform in exchange for what they really want, which is to send more of your tax dollars to Ukraine. I think Nikki Haley fits right in that camp. I think she's from the, she's from the McConnell, Dick Cheney wing of the party. And this is the antithesis of everything I believe in. 
I've spent uh, a few years trying to promote the ideas of liberty. There is a wing of the party that believes in that, and I want to make sure anybody that follows the, the, what I do knows that there's no way, shape, or form I could support Nikki Haley. Do we want another neocon leading our nation into new wars while we're already on the brink of financial collapse? But if you need another reason or two to join the Never Nikki movement, we got you covered. But I've also seen her indicate that she thinks you should be registered to use the internet, that people posting ideas anonymously. I think she fails to understand that our republic was founded upon people like Ben Franklin, Sam Adams, Madison, John Jay, and others who posted routinely for fear of the government. They posted routinely anonymously. And I think her failure to really understand that or to think that you should register through the government somehow for the internet is something that should disqualify her in the minds of all libertarian, libertarian leaning conservatives. Register to use the internet? That's what totalitarian dictators do. And, yes, Nikki Haley blatantly said this would be one of the first things she did if she is elected. When I get into office, the first thing we have to do, social media accounts, social media companies, they have to show America their algorithms. Let us see why they're pushing what they're pushing. The second thing is every person on social media should be verified by their name. That's, first of all, it's a national security threat. When you do that, all of a sudden, people have to stand by what they say, and it gets rid of the Russian bots, the Iranian bots, and the Chinese bots. And then you're going to get some civility when people know their name is next to what they say. Accountability. And they know their pastor and their family member is going to see it. It's going to help our kids, and it's going to help our country. Since when is trashing the Constitution and our most sacred right going to help our country? But the real nail in the coffin that should have conservatives and libertarians walking away from Nikki? Democrat mega donors, who also happen to be billionaires, are lining up to endorse and fund Haley's campaign, including LinkedIn co-founder Reid Hoffman, JP Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon, New Hampshire billionaire Frank Laukin. Grassroots conservatives are saying never Nikki because she's a neocon who will launch us into never-ending wars, spiral our country even further into debt, continue to trash our constitutional rights, all while cozying up to Democrat mega donors. Even these mega donors realize Haley has no standing with the grassroots movement. Are you team never Nikki? Let us know in the comments.